Hey my friends, here it is, the long awaited review for Affinity Publisher. And I have to say I had a lot of fun with this software. This is not a tutorial, but I will still show you a lot of tips and tricks on how to use it. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria. And I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that. Let's get started. So we switch over to the software. We can see now we are in Affinity Designer. And the first thing we want to do is to create a new document. So we go to File and New. And already we see something that is really interesting. You can select Type and it says Print, but also Photo, Web, Device and Presets. Presets means that you can create your own presets, but the other formats like photo or web tells us that Affinity Publisher is not just for print, it's also for things you can do on the screen. For example, PDF presentations, slideshows, maybe also landing pages, stuff like that. And I read a lot about Affinity Publisher, I watched videos, I tried the different features. I have to say I'm really surprised how well everything is integrated, especially also with their own software like Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. And of course it has a very, very low price, which is even more surprising. So. I will select print format. You can see here with the presets, we have European formats, we have American formats. I will use A4 for this, which is an, um, a European format. Here you can set the number of pages. Let's set this to three. And down here you can set different layout settings. You can, for example, decide between portrait or not portrait, which means horizontal. Then you have a color setting. I will not set this to CMYK because this is just for a screen recording, even though I'm going to select the print mode, but I want to have you look at nice colors. So then we also have margins. Margin is the safe area inside of a document, especially a print document. And then we have bleed. Bleed is where the print um, company is cutting the paper for you. So this is kind of the no man's land where the blade is going. I will leave the settings as they are right now and click here on OK. And you can see already that we have now our page here. We don't see any lines at the moment. This is because I'm in preview mode. You can switch to the work space mode basically. So you go to view and you unhook preview mode or you hit Control Shift W. That's for Windows, not for Mac. For Mac it's probably a bit different. So when we click this, we see two different lines. One is a blue line, blue rectangle, and these are the margins. The margins is the area inside of the paper that's a safe area where you can put important content. The reason for that is, first of all, for example, in a book, you don't want to have the text going directly to the edge of the paper because it looks very crowded and unpleasant to look at. And also, you have to put somewhere your hands to actually hold the paper, so this would cover up um, the printed text. So you want to have an area inside of the paper um, that is safe for the important stuff and then you have an edge around it. And then like I said we have the bleed which is the gray area here and as you can see the bleed is going over your paper size over the canvas. The reason for that is that every time you print something the print size has to be a little bit bigger than your actual paper that you get delivered when it's cut because the print shop has to cut it somewhere and this is the area where it's cut. But you should still note that everything you create inside of your page should reach over into the bleed area because otherwise when it's cut you would end up with an ugly white edge. You don't want to have that so you want to have like pictures and all these things going into the bleed. Good. The next important thing we want to look in here, and by the way, if I'm not showing features you think are very important, please write that in the comment and I will present these features in the next video. And also if you have questions about the software, put them in the comments. And also if I'm going a little bit fast, this is because this is a review and not a tutorial. I will do tutorials about Affinity Publisher that will of course be more step by step and slower. So. Here on the left side, what we see is master pages and then also pages. And what a master page is, is this kind of a preset for other pages. You can create multiple master pages if you want and apply them to different pages of your design. So I will double click on master A 
And I will create some shapes in here. So let's make one and that is blue. And then we make a second one and we use change that to pink. And you can see that down here on the pages because they all use master A and you will, the software will tell you by when you mouse over it, it will say master A. This is updating live. So if I move these shapes around here, this will also update in all the other pages. A useful case to use this is for example if you have a brochure or a menu for your restaurant where you want to have the same design on all the pages and the only thing that's changing is the items like the dishes and the description of the dishes so this is how you would use that okay let's delete these shapes real quick and i will go to page one and we will create a nice little fun design just to show you different features that i really like about affinity publisher so the first thing and you might know them already from affinity photo or affinity designer is the new stock function that is very handy and makes the workflow extremely fast so you click here in stock and you can get now pages and designs from pages like unsplash pixels and pixabay uh, for example let's go with a mountain so i will drag this in here and you can see it gives you a little bit information about the photographer and also gives you the resolution of the image and by the way all the images you find on these pages can be used for free in commercial purposes okay so now that we have this in here you can see that this is going over our paper and the picture is still visible this is because we are in work mode and when we go to preview like I said before, the preview mode, this will show you only what is printed. But when you design it, you probably also want to see what is sticking over it, like I said, so you can be sure that everything is in the right place and everything is also um, overlapping the page so the colors are still there when they are getting cut. All right. So now that we have that, we want to create a nice text. So I don't want to create just any text. I want to have text that's flowing in a fun way. So the way I can do this is in Affinity Publisher. I can use the pen tool and I click and drag and then I click and drag again and then I click and drag again. And you can see that this creates a curve. And I can also use my note tool to move the curve around after I have created that. And now with this curve, I can go over here to my text tool up there, artistic text tool, when I click it and move it near my path, I can click and the text, sorry, that was a sound from my computer. Um, the text is now on the path that was created. So now I can write, for example, I will write wild here. Let's make the text bigger. You can see it's following the path in a very nice way. I will change my font to something that's more fun and also change the color of the font. And then I will click and duplicate this and I will change the text to um, life. The reason I do this is because now I can just move this around in any position I want uh, on my picture. For example, um, should we put it down here? Let's put it down here. That's okay. That's good. Let's move this over here a little bit. Move this over here a little bit. And there we go. We are good. So the next thing that's really fun is assets. So you can put assets here. For example, PNGs. You can just drag them into an asset window. I will do a tutorial on how to use assets, how to create them, how to make category stuff like that. Right now, I'm just showing you they are there. So um, I use, for example, this sun here. So I pull this in here and I can put this over there or let's put it down here. And already you can see we are creating in seconds a very nice and fun design for our layout. The next thing I want to do is put some extra pictures in here because this is supposed to be about wildlife and I can do this in two different ways. I can either just drag a picture over here or I can use a picture frame. You can see here we have round picture frames and we have rectangle picture frames. So for the moment, I want a round picture frame. So I click on this and I click and hold shift and drag. So I'm creating a perfect circle. As you can see down here, it's a bit hard to see, but that doesn't matter because you will see it better in a second. So I want to have, for example, um, let's say I want to have a fox as a picture. There we go. 
Uh, that fox looks cool. I will drag this onto my picture frame and this is automatically loaded into my picture frame as you can see here. Beautifully super fast and um, I can with this lever down here I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger to zoom in a little bit and when I mouse over this area you can see here that you have this little um, sign here with the four arrows I can move my picture around it will also show me a preview of the rest of the picture so I know what else is there and where the picture ends and when I use my move tool of course I can move all of this around if you wonder how to resize it you can either resize just the picture frame or what you can also do is down here you have an extra dot and if you click that and you resize, you will also resize the image content of your picture frame. That is super, super nice and easy to use. Another thing you can do, of course, is you can go over here to layer effects. You can see down here layer effects. You click on that and let's say we want to have an outline in white. So I select white as a color and then I make the radius of my outline bigger and my fox gets a nice little um, outline. Okay, so now we can move this over here. And the next thing I want to do is to add some text about the fox. So I can use the normal text tool for that, but what I actually want to do is I want to use my frame text tool because this gives me some advanced features. So I can drag out a box, a rectangle box here, and um, let's write any kind of text. Let's just write this is a fox in uh, the wild. Point. Okay, there we go. Stop. And I will just um, wait a second. I will just copy this a bunch of times so we fill up the box with text like that. Okay, good. You can't see the text right now. Um, so now that I have selected the box, I can, for example, change all of the text to bold and I can change all of the text color to white. You can see that is very easy and very fast. I can also resize the text if I want to. And still we can't really read it that well. So we can do two things about that. Um, you can, for example, create a rectangle like this and make that black. There we go and reduce the opacity. And then I will put this behind the text and I can select both layers and now say, I want to go here with, uh, select the move tool so I get this smart bar up here, um, the alignment center center. So this is actually in the center of the box and now it's a lot easier. Um, to read the text. I can also group these two and I can move them around together if I want to. So that is super easy to do. Another thing though that we can do and um, this is why this is so handy to be able to switch over. Like you can see here, I click here and now I'm suddenly inside of designer. That's very fast and now I can click again over here and now I'm in the photo persona. So what we can do with that is, for example, I can now, because this is Affinity Photo now, I can create a live filter for Gaussian blur and I can create a blur. I can't see it right now because it's on the box. I will drag this down over my layer with the mountain. Let's preserve alpha so we preserve the edges and you can see that this is getting blurred. So. Now that I've created this, I can use the rectangle and drag it on top of my Gaussian blur layer and then right click and say mask to below. And this is now a mask that I can still move around. You can see here the rectangle, I can still move this around. It will move the blur to any kind of position where I want to have it. I can still double click in here because this is non-destructive, it's live and I can blur my picture in the background. So also this is very nice to have. And um, let's switch over again to our publisher persona. You can see that the background of the image is now blurred in the way that we have set it up. Uh, by the way, you can see that the blur is not as strong as it should be. This is because 
I have reduced the opacity. So if we bring the opacity back, you can see that the blur is getting stronger again. I forgot to set the opacity and I can double click now and readjust my blur. And you can see that this helps me to make the text more visible, but at the same time, keep the picture in the back. Another thing that is really interesting or really nice to have about um, Affinity Publisher is, for example, when I have this picture and I would like to have it over the text in a way that the text is moving around the picture. The way that I can do this, and I know in other programs, for example, you would have to set this up for the text individually, but here you set it up for the picture and that is really nice and very fast to use. So you select the picture, or in this case, the picture frame, and click up here to show text wrap settings. And there I will set it to tight. And then I will make these a little bit bigger. So these are the distance that the text should have to the picture. So we now have set this up. And now if I move the picture, you can see that the text is automatically dancing around my image. So that is very, very nice to have. And of course, I can now also either resize the text box because you can see that the text was pushed outside of the box or what I can do alternatively is I can create a second text box and have the text automatically overflow in the second text box. So let's create a second text box over here and I will go again to my move tool, click on the first text box and down here where the red eye is, I click once and when I move my mouse over, this will highlight the second text box indicating that I can put the text in here. So when I click, you can see that automatically the text starts to flow into that box. So that is very nice. You can see there's a red eye still because we still have text that is not visible, that is overflowing even the second text box. So we could probably move this up here until we can see all of the text. So you can see there's a lot of very nice features and right away I can by the way uh, also duplicate the Gaussian blur layer. Like I said, the rectangle that we created can still be moved around. So I can move this over here. So this is now a second blur and this is moved now over my picture here um, or over the text, not the picture. So I also have a blur behind that one. Okay, another thing, and that is more specialized to Affinity Designer, they can also use in Affinity Persona because they are all connected with each other, is that you can create symbols. And symbols are kind of a special thing. And I will see if they will work for me because sometimes um, uh, the display how the image is displayed breaks a little bit. So let's see if this works now. I will create uh, um, like this shape here so we could point, for example, where the fox is. This is just an example to show you how the software works. So let's make this pink so you can see it really well. And I could now say here, create symbol. So this is, you can see here now I have a symbol. The interesting thing for that is, uh, let's hold control, click and drag, and I will make another shape over here, for example. So this is now a copy and all these symbols are linked. If I rotate my symbol, nothing happens to the other symbol because the symbol kind of works like a container. And if I rotate the full container, it doesn't really change the content. I mean, the content follows the container basically, but if I go in here, you can see inside of the symbol, we have the different layers that make our symbol. So if I click here and now I rotate the shape inside of my symbol, the other symbol follows too. You can see right now it's displayed in the wrong way. It breaks the program right now. You can fix this by clicking back and forth between different applications. Uh, so it's easily fixed at the moment. I think they will make an update to fix this kind of problem. But you can see how handy this is that when you have symbols, you can adapt them and you can change them and they will synchronize live to all the other symbols that you have inside of your design. So this can be super useful, very, very handy. And like I said, click back and forth between these different programs a couple of times and it will fix this kind of error in the display.
Okay, thank you very much. This was the review of different features that I found really interesting about Affinity Publisher. If you want to see more features or if you think I forgot a very important feature to say or to show you, write it in the comments and I will make a video about it. And also I will make tutorials about Affinity Publisher where I will go slower through the points. This was pretty fast because it's a review and I didn't want it to be like an hour long or something. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.